Now, let's go to an even less complicated one. So, again, when we were talking about the things that the spectrum can tell us, in my opinion, um, well, where did it go? In my opinion, composition was really complicated. Temperature was pretty complicated. But this last one is easier to understand. It doesn't take as much to explain, although it is still a little weird, okay? So let's set up this last one. I won't tell you what it is yet. We're gonna figure out what this last thing is, okay? So here we go. And this is the last thing we're gonna be talking about today, okay? So there's not too much more here. All right, let's get into it. So let's say there's a light bulb. Let me draw a little light bulb right here. Let's say that's a light bulb, okay? Let me zoom this in a little bit. There we go. And let's say that light bulb is a green light bulb. Like it's got green glass on it or something. It's just, it's a green light bulb, okay? Nope, that's not a mushroom. That is a light bulb. That's the best I can do. Don't make fun of my, don't make fun of my, my light bulb. Oh, it's okay. It's perfect. It's now, oh, I have an idea. It's okay. All right. Now, let's say... You and your friend are looking at that light bulb and you're standing here. Let me see here. Let's say you are right here. Here's you. That's that's you. Whatever. I guess you're a ninja. <laughs> you're a ninja because I can't draw a face, okay? Um, and over here, here's your friend over there. Your friend is looking at, apparently your friend's like a Pac-Man ghost or something, whatever. You guys are looking at this light bulb, okay? Now, don't overthink this. Don't overthink this. This light bulb is sending off green light in every direction. So there's some green light coming this way. And there's some green light coming this way. Uh, my pen is not cooperating. There we go. Whatever. I didn't draw that very well. But uh, don't overthink this. Here's a hard question. What color are you and your friend going to see? What color are you and your friend going to see? Yeah. You're gonna see green, right? You're just gonna see green. It's not gonna. It's not complicated. It's just. It's just green, right? Good job. Now, on the other hand, let's say we change the situation a little bit. Okay. So this is like situation one up here. Let's say we change the situation just a little bit. We got the exact same light bulb. Light bulb, not mushroom. <laughs> You're standing in the exact same place and your friend is standing in the exact same place. But this time, this time, instead of uh, the light bulb just sitting there, you guys are looking at it while it is moving, okay? And let's say that that light bulb is moving towards you, which means it's moving away from your friend. Okay, now, what is that going to do? If the light bulb is moving this way, then the wave in front of it is going to end up getting bunched up. Because the light is moving into, uh, sorry, because the bulb is moving into its own beam of light, the peaks will end up being closer together because it's emitting them closer and closer and closer to you. Okay, can you figure out what's going to happen to the light behind the light bulb? What's going to happen to the light on this side? If the light over here is getting bunched up because the light bulb is moving into its own light, what might happen to the light back here? Just take a guess. Give you guys a second. Not quite. It's stretched. It gets stretched out. You can almost think of this as kind of like a slinky, okay? You can almost think of that beam of light as kind of like a slinky. 
So when you move into your own light that you're giving off, you're going to squish it up. But when the light bulb moves away from the, uh, the source, it's going to end up stretching out. Okay? Now, this changes what your friend in you see. What's going to change about what you guys are seeing? And I just threw my pen across the room. What's going to change about what you guys see? I don't need specifics, but what kind of thing is going to change? It's Oh, it's not going to change how bright the object looks. But it's going to change. It's kind of weird. It's going to change the color you see. It's going to change the color you see. Because, uh, remember, our eyes see wavelength as color, right? Our eyes see wavelength as color. So, because... Uh, same thing, we could think of it as frequency also. Um, because this light got squished up, what happened to the wavelength on this side? Did the wavelength right here get shorter or longer? Is this wavelength shorter or longer than the real color that the light bulb's trying to give off? That's shorter. And over here, uh, on the other side, um, it looks longer, right? On the other side, it looks longer. So... Because it's altering what gets to our eyes, it's going to alter the colors you see. And in fact, you and your friend are going to see different colors. Okay? And in fact, the faster this thing moves, the wronger the colors you will guys will see. Because it's always actually a green light bulb. It's always trying to make green light. But the faster it moves, the more this is going to get bunched up and the more that's going to get stretched out. And so that means that the colors you guys see will be more and more wrong, okay? If something is moving really slow, you're not going to notice its color change. So everybody check it out. Check this out. Watch my hand. Watch my hand. Ugh. Did my hand change color for you guys? It didn't change color for me, right? It, I didn't see my hand change color. And that is because my hand is not moving very fast. But if I could move my hand at, like, close to the speed of light, when I shoved it in at you, you would actually be able to see its color physics look like it changes, right? Now, how does it change? Um, well, check it out. Here we go. Here we go. If this is a green light... And let's say it moves towards you very fast. What's the next color along the rainbow that's a little bit shorter than green light? If we made this light a little bit shorter wavelength, think about the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. What's the next color that's a little bit shorter than uh, green? It's blue. So if this light bulb, if this green light bulb came at you fast enough, it will look blue. And that's where this process gets its name. If that object is coming at you and the color you're seeing is shorter than the real color, we call it a blue shift. A blue shift. On the other hand, if you were your friend, your friend wouldn't see blue because they're not seeing a shorter color. Let's say that this green light bulb moves away from you very, 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 very fast so that it stretches out to the longest color we could possibly see. What color would this person see if they're seeing now the longest possible color? Yeah, as it went away from them, faster and faster, first it would look yellow, and then if it went faster, it would look orange, and then if it went even faster, it would eventually learn, look red. That's correct. Um, so um, we could have called, named this after any of those colors. It would have made sense to say it was a yellow shift, right? Um, but we actually call it a red shift because if you got it moving fast enough, you would see... 
a fake red color coming off of it, okay? So if something is coming towards you, it's gonna have what we call a blue shift, and when if something is going away from you, we call that a red shift, okay? So let's put this together. If you compare the color you see to the real color, what could you learn about this object? What would you learn about this object if you compare the fake color you're seeing to the real color it's trying to give off? What could you figure out about that object? What is all of this telling us? Here's a hint. What was the object doing? It's, yeah, it's, it's the movement. It's how fast it moves. That's good. It's the speed. We can learn the speed of this object by how strong this effect is, okay? So let's add that as the third thing the spectrum can tell us, okay? The third thing that we can learn from the spectrum is the speed towards or away. It tells us the speed towards or away from us. So we, yeah, we can figure out if a star out there is coming at us or moving away from us and how fast it's going, okay? Um, how do we do that? Well, again, um, the color is shifting here, kind of like with temperature, but here the color shifts without getting hotter. So this graph would shift left or right without getting taller. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, but uh, essentially, again, if we're seeing a shorter color than the real color, then we know the object's coming towards us. And if we're seeing a longer color than the real color, we know the object's moving away from us. And the bigger the difference between what we see and the real color on either side tells us how fast it's doing that. Okay, and it only works for towards or away because it only squishes the light if it's coming towards us and it only stretches the light if it's moving away from us, right? If this object were moving up and down, you wouldn't get that effect, okay? Oh, and by the way, all together, this is called the Doppler effect. Have any of you guys ever heard of the Doppler effect? Yes or no? Have you ever heard this term, Doppler effect? That's okay. Um, sometimes they mention it. If you pay really close attention to the, to, uh, the weather, um, you might sometimes hear the weather person say, uh, like, Doppler radar um, or, or something like that. Um, this is something we use to track clouds, okay? Doppler radar in weather is, is basically what we do. We, we take a, a, a light of known wavelength and bounce it off of a cloud. And if the cloud's coming towards us, when that light reflects back to us, um, we can, uh, it'll get squished up and we know that that cloud is coming at us. But if the cloud was moving away, uh, the, the light that bounces back will be stretched out and we'll know that the cloud is going away. Um, that's actually how radar in general works. That's how we're able to track other planes. Uh, we can track their speed and direction by looking at light bouncing off of them. If it gets squished up, we know it's coming this way. If it's stretched out, we know it's going away from us, right? 